Hello everyone, Linda Israel here. The scent of the day is Fresh Pear from JIC. They are soy wax melts and candles. They have jewelry involved with them. So I haven't got to this one yet, but there is a piece of jewelry here. It is a necklace. So when you place an order, you get to choose if you want a necklace or earrings or rings. And on the rings, you get to choose what size. You just don't know what the actual design will be. So this is one of the rings that I got in a candle or a tart. So it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. It's kind of like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You don't know what the surprise is going to be at the bottom. It's a great way to support me as an artist. Or you can go to my shop and pick up one of my works that I have made in one of my videos. Be a great way to support me. I greatly appreciate it. Today I want to share with you a little journal that is made out of paper bags, a paper bag journal if you will, using the Calico Collage images, the digital images, and this is, I forgot the name of it, does it say on here? But it'll, I don't have the name with me, but it will be in the description link. And I just loved how bright and cheery this was. And I decided instead of making cards out of it, I thought it would be really good to put on a paper bag journal. So I've got a few paper bags here, and I'll show you how I construct or how I'm going to construct this particular journal. First thing is these paper bags, I buy in bulk. I believe I got 500 of them from the grocery supply. Sometimes in your cities you may have a grocery supply. You can go there. You may or may not have to have a wholesale account, but you do have to buy in bulk. And so I bought a huge package of these. I think they were either 500, 250, or 1,000. So I bought a bunch. So these are plain paper bags. There's no printing on them. That's why I bought them. I didn't want them to say what size they were on the bottom. They are 6 by about 12 inches long. And what I do is I select 3. I've got more than 3 laying here, but I select 3. Get that away. I take my bone folder and then I will go over all of the edges of it. And what this does is this helps smooth it out so that everything will lay flat when you go to make it into a journal. Do that to all three or four, however many bags you want. And then the next thing you're going to do is you will alternate your bags. So you will turn one with the bottom of the bag facing one way, one going the other, and then the third the other direction. You can choose whether or not you want these to be on the inside or the outside. I wanted to have an opening at the front of my journal. You may choose to have the smooth or finished edge on the front of your journal. That's up to you. The next thing that I do, knowing which way I want these, is I fold them in half, making sure that I don't have any tucks on the inside. I use my bone folder and then crease it. And then I take the next one and fold it in half and do the same thing until I have all three bags folded. Do that. Have all three bags stacked together so that they won't move around on me. I take a little binder clips. You can use whatever is convenient to you, paper clips, binder clips. And I push them all together so I know that they're not going to move around. I then take a ruler and I mark down the center one inch little dots so I know where I'm going to punch my holes for the binding. So you can see I marked two little dots. I have a cutting mat. It's for quilters, but it's a cutting mat. I use the back side when I'm going to use my punch. 
and I have a little hammer and I have one of these book binding type punches or you can use a Japanese screw punch if you have a nice hole punch like I have a home pro punch that's a great big industrial punch you can use that you can use a hole punch but you'll have to punch each bag individually and what I do is I just line up this and then I take my hammer and hit it a couple of times and that punches the hole so I do that on both sides here's a sack that I've already done both the next thing I do is I pick out some twine, some ribbon, and then I poke it through the holes. I'm not going to do all the colors, but I'm just going to show you. I go from the outside of the bag to the inside of the bag. This is the Canvas Court Brands twine. You can color it, you can use your ink pads, you can use Glimmer Mist or the high impact paint and make this whatever color you want and it's super strong. So basically this is becoming like a sewn book in that if you wanted you could take a spine and put it on the back side and then sew this through. What I would do is pull a piece through come up and then you can tie it make a knot or two make a bow whatever you like cut off the excess if you want to add more ribbon you can but that will at least get those together so that you have those that won't fall apart so then what I do is I measure the front of this each bag is going to be different so you want to measure it and I can see here that this is approximately six inches square so I've decided to cut my paper at five and a half inches square and that's what I did I went through and cut all of my papers that I wanted to cover each surface to be five and a half inches and then we'll address the flap in a moment This is my cover that I chose. I like the butterfly and I've die cut, not die cut, I used my silhouette and cut the word believe. The word is got the letters welded together. Cut it out of black cardstock. I made a bunch of these because I taught a class in January. No, it was December. I forgot what day it was, what month it was. I taught it in December and I had a few left over because I always cut more than necessary. I'm using some white glue and I have forgotten to do a step but we will see if we can't fix that. And I'm white using the white glue to go on here. I've got Tim Holtz tumbled glass and a distressing tool. That's what I forgot to do before I glued it down. And I'm just going around the edge to give just a little bit more of a defined edge to this. It's a real light blue so it may be hard for you to see on camera but it does make a difference especially when you have a, a little bit of a white edge showing the scrapbook paper is from my stash it was an old pad that I had that was called I see it was from my mind's eye wild asparagus so it may not be something that's current but I liked it so I used it trying to use up the papers I have in my stash now for the digital image, because I did cut the edge, I've got my Brutus Monroe Detail Ink, and I'm going to just go over the edge, and what that'll do is that will finish that white cut from the paper, 
you know, I'll make it look all finished. I like this particular pad of or digital designs that she made. She went ahead and made a dark edge, but I still like to go in and finish it off so you don't see where the paper was cut. Again, I'm going to use my white glue and glue this in place. I like to use my bone folder and that'll help mush out the glue and smooth things around. I got lucky. I placed an order with Staples to order my prints to be printed because I didn't want to run out of ink in my printer at home. And when I went to pick them up, I had ordered one copy of six sheets of paper and another copy set that was 21 and it was two. Well, I got the two sets of 21 with no issue. When I looked in my folder that they gave me, I had more paper than I should have. And I got to looking at it, they had made six copies of my six images that I wanted printed. So I ended up with a bonus, so I have six sets of these images. And that's why I decided to make this paper bag journal. Because I love the way the images look, and I thought, well, this would be good. So I punched a heart. Ah, I almost dropped it. I punched a heart. This is from Paper Studios. That's this heart here. And then I used my magnetic alphabet stamp set from, I think that's uh, Memory Makers. It's old. I've had it for a really long time. And I thought that would look cute right there so it says believe in happiness so that's going to be the cover of my journal one thing that i didn't tell you about was i like to put a tie on the front of my journal so that it ties shut so what i did was i used my atg gun and then i stuck down the ribbon one at a time so these are stuck on top of each other, and I did that on the front, and I did that on the back. So they're not going anywhere. And now I'm going to take the cover and put that on here. Again, I'm going to use my white glue. Make sure I have it right side up. So that you didn't have to watch the whole video of me making this journal from start to finish of gluing the same paper over and over I have already gone in and started a few pages so here we are to one of the inside pages I've got all my little pieces here that I want to go now this is where the flap is I'm going to take a little bit of the white glue and I'm going to make a little bead on either side of this flap because it's going to come a pocket so I'll just take that and press it down I had a five and a half inch square piece of paper here on this side that I cut for my particular bag I was able to cut a two inch strip off that would fit here and then the rest of it will fit on the other side of the flap I then took the detail or excuse me the tumble glass distress ink and just went over the edges like so so you get a nice little teal edge and I've done that on both pieces of paper and I'm going to glue these in place I cut a label shaped what's called top note die and it was out of chipboard and I painted it with a acrylic paint this was an acrylic paint that I painted it with and a little bit of white to soften it up 
and then I put it in my Misty and I use this Stampabilities Cling Stamp and stamped it on top of that. So this becomes a little note card that I handmade. Now, let me tell you a tip about cling stamps. Sometimes these rubber style of cling stamps, and I'll show you because this one's going to do it. It has this film on here that's supposed to stick but it's not sticking as you can see it's not going to stick to the block so when you go to ink it it'll move so here's a trick that I have found years ago if you will use a lean or excuse me a leans uh, tack it over and over again or the zig two-way glue and here's what I do I just take the glue and I make a mark all the way down on my stamp it dries clear and it dries sticky so I'll let that air dry for a couple of seconds maybe up to like 30 and then my stamp that wouldn't stick before will stick again so if you ever have a stamp like this that you've washed it it just won't stick to anything try using the zig two-way glue to stick it back down onto your acrylic blocks and the storage sheet that it comes on so you don't have to give up and throw a stamp away there is a way to make it stick again well that's how I made this little journaling note and that's going to go inside of here. I took this little stamp here out of perfectly clear stamps. It was on sale for $2.99. I think the day that I bought this I got an additional discount because everything was on sale if you had a coupon with Michaels. And I cut a piece of paper perfectly sized and stamp that out. Isn't that a cute little journaling card? Then I used the corner rounder from We Are Memory Makers and rounded the corners used the tumbled glass and went around the edges like so. So now this has become a little journaling block. I've got a couple of the images here from the collection. So I'm going to use the Brutus Monroe Detail Ink and go around the edges. Give this a little bit of color to that white edge. have a scrap piece from cutting all of the pages and what I like to do when I make a project is use every little piece so this was just a piece that was left over and I am going around it with the tumbled glass to finish that white edge and we're going to use that on here think what I want is like that. So I'm going to glue down the tealish with the polka dots. Again, it is also from the asparagus, wild asparagus from my mind's eye. I have a butterfly die that I've put in my Xyron sticker maker. I'm just going to pull that out of here. And then I'm going to use my bone folder to get all the adhesive on there as possible. You peel off the top portion. 
Now because there's little holes in there, all the glue may not have gone to the transfer paper. So what I like to do is take my finger and just kind of rub over it. And what will happen is the glue that's not stuck to the paper will ball up. I don't know if you can see that. And I can just brush it away. I'm going to stick this little butterfly on my page here. I think it'll go right there. So there's a layout right there. For the inside of my book, I want to have some journaling spots. So I've taken a piece of cardstock and cut it into basically a large 5 inch by 11 is it 5 by 11? I always have to look no it was 5 and a half by 11 little book and then scored it and folded it in half on the front cover I've got uh, some more of the wild asparagus papers I'm going to use my detail ink, or excuse me, distressed ink. Too many D's for the inks. And I'll go around the edge of this. And then I stamped out of the stampology from autumn leaves these sayings here and one of them was happiness giggles and smiles i'm going to go around the edge of that give this a little more color then we'll glue these into place I have another one of the butterflies that I ran through my sticker maker, so we'll put that on here. So that's my outside cover. I want to have journaling spaces inside. And a while back I purchased a little legal junior pad. So what I did was I took the pages out. They're rather thin, but they're perfect for writing on. And I trimmed it down to about five inches square. And then I placed it in my Misty. The seven gypsy stamp here that has these numbers down the side. This is a discontinued set. You may still be able to find it in the Canvas Court brand shop. If you just look for stamps, this was a, a clear stamp set. Give you a good picture of that. And I stamped it down the side of my paper. So it has this nice little image on the side and still plenty of room to write. I did that on four sheets of paper for each side. I had some scraps of paper left over from trimming this down and those are going to go at the top. So what I did was I lined up all the papers and then took my piece that was going to go across the top and took a look at it and made sure that it was in the center. Took a binder clip and clipped it so it wouldn't move. I took my stapler and then stapled this in place. Making sure it went all the way through on the back side. So there's one little pad that's ready to go on this side. 
And we'll do the other one. I have a couple other scraps of paper here. I don't know where they came from. It may have been from the same paper pack, but I'm going around it with the tumbled glass. And it's going to go over my staples. Then I stamped the word journal. This was a stamp from Postmodern Designs that I got years ago. And I just liked the way that looked. And it was stamped with the Brutus Monroe Detail Ink. So I'm going to go around that. forgot to say that I used the Brutus Monroe C ink to stamp the seven gypsies numbers down the side because I thought that matched perfectly. So I'm going to assemble this, glue the journal on top of the scrap and then glue the scrap on top of the staples and then I'm going to take white glue and glue the whole thing down onto the cardstock holder so you want to make sure that you trim this topper just a little bit short so that it doesn't get into the seam here otherwise it won't close properly and there is a little journal that will go within the big journal this is one of the journals that went into the pockets that were naturally formed from the bags if you have any white core paper I just go around it with my ink pad to cover up any of those raw edges and then you won't see that white core now I want to do the back cover I just cut a strip of cardstock that's going to go across in the middle I forgot to edge it I always do that when I'm on the video I get so excited to tell you guys stuff then I forget what I'm doing Set this across in the middle. And I chose three of the smaller images that are from this set. I'm going to use the detail ink and go around these images. And there's my back cover all right so flip through for this little journal that I made so here's the cover that I made for you today and then just inside is the journal that we made today and then here is a second journal same concept I knew I forgot to do something I want to fix that I had stamped this image on here before and I forgot there this is a postmodern designs little swirl stamp 
So I stamped that on there as well. And then this is my next spread here. This was again one of the words that I cut with my silhouette. Another one of the labels and of course the image. This is a word I stamped from Postmodern Design label and the image there. Here is the page that I did for you today that has the pocket so you can add other things to it if you want. Here's the next pocket. So there's another journal there. Here's another one. This was a stamp set that I picked up. I got three of them. These were from Stampabilities. They're clear stamps and I just love the little sayings. Keep pulling them out when I should put them back in. There's the next spread that I made. Again, this is a stamp from Postmodern Designs. Another a pocket. The next two page spread from Postmodern Design again. Two more of these journals. There's one. I just like the natural pocket that the bag makes. Here's another. Here's the last page. And then here's the back. And then this can be tied shut. So you don't lose anything. So there is my little paper bag junk journal book that I made using the Calico Designs images, some cord from Canvas Corp Brands using Tim Holtz Distressed or Ink and the Brutus Monroe Detail Ink, some cut files that I created with my silhouette and then a few other little embellishments, the My Mind's Eye Wild Asparagus papers that were used in here. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and flip through of my journal. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. If you haven't already subscribed to me, please subscribe. I always have new things coming up weekly. Almost every three or four days, there's a new video coming up. Follow me on social media, on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I share things there that don't always make it into a video, so please do follow me. If you're interested in any of the items that I used today, check out my link to the blog post below, and that will have a description of where you can get all of these items that I shared today. Thanks so much for watching me today. I hope you enjoyed this, and aspire to be amazing. Bye.